But let's get right into it because we're going to begin this hour with the first in a three-part series we're calling Psychedelic Renaissance, which looks at the mind-altering and maybe mood-boosting possibilities of substances that are starting to enter the mainstream. Colorado, one of just two states now that allow, allow psychedelic mushrooms to be used and used legally. At the federal level, however, they are still illegal, but that has not stopped people, you may know some of these people, from using them to cope with pain and trauma. A lot of people say it works. CBS News contributor Lisa Ling joins us now with more on this. I'm very interested in Lisa. Good morning. Good morning, Tony. Nice to see you all. Now, we all know that rates of anxiety and depression are soaring in America, and so are prescriptions for pharmaceutical drugs. But for this series, we found people looking for alternatives. We met one Colorado mental health professional turned certified psychedelic psych psychotherapist or facilitator, and we joined her as she led a women's retreat, including two sisters, their mom, and even their grandma. Think they slept much on the plane? I'm headed to the Denver airport with 59-year-old Dana Sanchez and her 77-year-old mom, Donna Strong. I just hope when they come up, like, they're not all cranky. <laughs> We're here to greet Dana's two daughters flying in from their homes in Hawaii. Oh, there they are. Hello! <laughs> oh my god, I missed you. 25-year-old Danielle and 23-year-old Delaney are nearing the end of a very long physical journey. But now that three generations of this family are together, they're all getting ready for the emotional trip of their lives. Coming, Grandma. I'm coming. <laughs> so, Danielle and Delaney, your mom calls you and says, you want to do mushrooms with me and Grandma? <laughs> <laughs> with me and Grandma. Did. How did you respond? <laughs> um, well, we had talked about it for my anxiety, which I was really interested in. And I kind of felt like if my grandma could do it, I should be able to do it too. For how long have you had issues with anxiety? I got diagnosed when I was about 16, 17. So you were a teenager when you got on meds. Yeah. And were they effective? Not at all. They made me feel like very kind of numb to everything it felt like. And how does your anxiety manifest itself? So I have really bad panic attacks and I've been to the ER thinking that I was having a heart attack. Sometimes I feel like I can't go outside or really, I'm not comfortable anywhere. What about you as a big sis? And you naturally want to protect your younger sister. So, you know, you just wish you could take, take away that pain. I'm glad we're, we're all beginning. together. I mean, this is really special. It is Friday morning, and we're at a house rented by Heather, the facilitator, and her partner, Monica, who's leading the yoga. And the family's moved in. And while none of them are going to leave this house physically, some of them may be going to places they've never been before. How did you become a facilitator? So I've been a therapist for over 30 years. I went through one of the very first trainings to become certified in psychedelic assisted psychotherapy. In the 1960s, magic mushrooms took root in the counterculture movement and found their way into research labs. There are around 200 species of mushrooms that are known to contain the active component that produces psychedelic effects. We've come so far because in the 60s, there was so much incredible research going on. And then everything got shut down with the war on drugs. Just say no to drugs. Some 30 years after psilocybin was outlawed in 1970, scientists began revisiting it and found that it increased brain activity. Today, clinical trials are underway at top research institutions. Well, the final votes are in for a ballot initiative to decriminalize psychedelic mushrooms. Colorado citizens voted to decriminalize its use in 2022. How do you like the house? Heather Lee started facilitating psilocybin retreats not long after. Monica and I are going to be available, coming around, checking in on you. Why just women for these experiences? This medicine makes you so vulnerable, right? And I find women are saying, I feel so much better doing that in an all-female environment. I feel like I'm very open to some self-discovery. I'm in kind of a life transition. Seeing if I get some kind of guidance on my next steps. Thinking I might find something more about myself that I've either hidden <laughs> or need to learn about. Do you have concerns that what may come up for them may be something that they're not ready to confront? I would say that mushrooms seem to be very gentle teachers. 
they bring to light and bring to surface material that needs to be healed. So I haven't seen anybody re-traumatized by the mushrooms in my experience. Heather and her partner, Monica, pass out <laughs> mugs of mushroom tea. Cheers. <laughs> How can you guarantee people's safety? Well, I can't guarantee. What I do is screen really carefully. About 15 minutes after the women sip their tea, Danielle starts to feel something. I feel heady. <laughs> I feel weird. <laughs> We're going to get you to your, to your spots now and happy healing and wishing you all beautiful journeys today. Once in their rooms, each woman is given an eye mask and headphones with a preloaded soundtrack. And then they're off. Right off the bat, Dana is feeling unease. Heather goes in to assist. I feel calm and relaxed. Over in the girls' room, Danielle has a big smile on her face, but Delaney starts to get sick. I threw up every, like, negative thing in my body. Where That's are so these women so right now? Yeah. All the brain scans in the world can't explain what goes on when people are journeying on plant medicine. So where people go is different for everyone. Dana finally settles in, but is a bit restless. Delaney seems emotional. Danielle is still smiling. 77-year-old Donna hasn't moved in hours. After about three hours, Danielle and Delaney take off their masks and start talking and laughing. <laughs> A half hour later, their mom, Dana, joins them. <laughs> How are you guys feeling? Can I get in bed with you? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It was really intense. I was really like Me freaking too. out <laughs> to start. Oh. I felt like I couldn't breathe. And I just started laughing because I was just like, I felt like, what is there to so, what, why am I so stressed out? <laughs> More than four hours later, all of the women come together for what Heather calls the integration session. Wow. <laughs> that was quite the day. I had a rough start for sure. <laughs> I struggled a lot with that overwhelming feeling mm -hmm. of anxiety and just I felt trapped by my own panic and yeah. then I just had to let go and I just feel like once I did it got a lot more peaceful. No, oh, mine was a little dark okay. I, and I, it's like I, I just couldn't move. Yeah. You know I felt uh, uncomfortable mm -hmm. and I'm thinking maybe that's been my whole life. I think that the answer has yet to reveal itself what that was all about for mm -hmm. you today. I felt weighted and heavy. Okay. There was just this profound peace and love that I found that I felt like I could face my own fears with like a smile on my face and just saying, it's silly, just let it go. What do you feel one of the gifts you got today would be? The gift is, is the women in my f mm. family, just how strong we are, but mm. also we're growing together and we're releasing stuff together. Mm. Do you all feel like healing happened today? <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Why do you think that there is this psychedelic renaissance mm -hmm. happening right now? People are hungry for emotional and psychospiritual healing. We need soul healing. Mm -hmm. Wow. It's so great to have so member, many members of the same family, different ages, that did that together. It really it, was. And just to give you an update on Delaney, so there's something called a GAD-7 score, which measures your level of clinical anxiety. And for years, Delaney was hovering at about a 19 out of a 21 being the highest. Wow. Since her psilocybin journey, she reports that she's been at a 3. And she Ooh. recently wrote this, which I think is just so profound. A few weeks after journeying, I can truly say that I've never seen this much of a shift in my anxiety and my life so quickly. Yeah. I'm so interested in this. I, I, think I am too, Tony. We've so co-evolved with plants and the possibilities of plant medicine. Yes. But, you know, some, so many people have in their mind that kind of hippie picture. You had a, an right. image there. I'm curious, where did you start in your perception of all this? And has your mind or mood changed as you learn more about it? You know, Tony, I've just seen the progress that people have experienced who have used psychedelic medicines. It's not for everyone, as Heather Lee mm. just said. You have to um, uh, make sure that you don't have a history of severe mental illness and certainly consult a medical professional. But 
Um, as you just saw, after one treatment, um, some remarkable things can certainly happen. I yeah. was what Tony said, that peace, love, and groovy baby. That's how yeah. I thought of it, too. But It's I'm different curious, now, Gail. Uh, no, I, I know I friends and family that, that microdose on a that. daily basis yeah. and people that go on retreats once a year just to cleanse to their it. spirit well, and their and mind. They, and some people, after one treatment, that's all they need. That's all they yeah. need. Others yeah. might need to do some maintenance. Is it addictive? We, we, no, in fact, it actually helps to cure addiction. We have a lot. Cases. We have a lot to say I about know, this. Clearly, do. the good news, Lisa. Thank you for being here. That was a fantastic piece. The good <laughs> news is that was part one of a three-part series. Uh.